I'm going to rank every social media because at this point, every single person on the planet is using at least one every day. But which ones are actually good and worth using? Well, that's what I'm going to decide for you today, and I'm sure nobody's going to get offended by the stuff I have to say. Starting the list off strong, we have Twitch. Now, I think that Twitch originally was a good platform. I think a couple years ago, it was great. I think it was used for a lot of good. But I also think that they make a lot of really shitty decisions at this point that make it not very enjoyable to use. I'm trying to watch anything but ass whenever I'm on Twitch, and that's all I ever get. But at the same time, I feel like it's kind of the king of streaming platforms. It has the most features. It does, I think, the most well for the streamer and for the viewer. Even though I don't watch streams that much, and I'm definitely not going to watch them on Twitch, uh, I'll put it in good just because I think that something like Twitch has a place on the internet. Unlike Google+, Plus, which doesn't fucking exist anymore. Now, I actually don't know much about Google+. Plus. Um, I think that it was similar Similar to Discord in some ways, but it had a lot of bullshit features that people didn't really use or need in- I think it was like a messenger, basically. All I know is that in like 2015, Markiplier told me to follow his Google+, and I didn't do it. So for that, I'm gonna put it in never fucking used it, because I never did, and you never will be able to either. Now, uh, <laughs> I got a couple hot takes to say about Messenger. For those of you who have never used Messenger, keep it that way. This social media scares me. Your iPhone or your Android, your beep bop boop fucking battery falls out of your phone Android, they have built-in messengers in them. You don't need to download a specific messenger at all, which makes me feel like the only people who are using something like Messenger are people who are looking to buy child porn. Okay, listen, just hear me. This is the type of software I imagine that, you know, the to catch a predator people use to catch their predators. I'm scared to log on to this because I feel like I'm going to be put on a site for it. I don't know what good could possibly be done with Messenger or any reason for me to use it. So for that, you know exactly where I'm putting it. But then I'm actually going to be a complete hypocrite because now I'm going to talk about Snapchat. Snapchat's okay. Uh, I'd still say that you should definitely just use the built-in Messenger that you have in your phone. But Snapchat does some cool stuff. I mean, at my age group, I'm 14. Everybody talks on Snapchat. I don't really like it anymore. I went through my Snapchat phase. Uh, the only messages I ever get on Snapchat are just girls trying to get, keep up streaks, and I think it's pretty gay. Along with that, they uh, have like the worst short form content algorithm. It is unusable. It's terrible. It is absolute brain rot that you get fed whenever you're using it. And the problem is, is that whenever you use Snapchat, you're looking at your friend's stories, and then you keep tapping the screen to keep sorting through stories, and then you end up watching the the most terrible content. It's either OnlyFans girls or it's like people getting the worst haircut you could possibly imagine. I'm gonna put this one in okay because I see why people like to use it, but I personally, the way I use my phone, I don't really care about it anymore. But now we're gonna be talking about something actually good and that's Pinterest. If you've never used Pinterest, it's unlike a lot of other social medias, it's mainly image based. It's people showing pictures of collections or their room or anything interesting it's not so much, you know, posting what you think about the Donald Trump shooting or looking at OnlyFans girls on their Snapchat. It's just kind of cool pictures that are catered towards you. And that's what I like about it. If I were to search the exact same thing on Google Images and then Pinterest, I'm probably going to get cooler shit on Pinterest. That being said, though, it's not the type of social media that you use every day. But every time I've used Pinterest, it was in a positive way and I had a positive experience doing it. That being said, though, like I said, it's not a necessity. So I'm going to put it in good because I have no problems using it. Now, my problem with, like, Rumble and Kick and all these, like, new age cool social medias is that there's not a reason for them. I understand that there's a lot of problems with YouTube and that there's a lot of problems with Twitch, but at the end of the day, those softwares are the most advanced because they've been there the longest. They're the best ones, hands down. You cannot tell me that Rumble is more enjoyable to use than YouTube as a viewer. It's just not. And as a content creator, there's, like, no audiences on these platforms because everybody's just gonna keep using YouTube and Twitch. Why? Because they work. They might be shitty, they might have their problems, but at the end of the day, they do what the viewer and what the creator wants more than any of these other social media spin-off bullshit platforms try to do. I'll talk a little bit more about this whenever I get to kick, but I just don't see the need for these. There's problems with these social medias, like I've said a million times now, but that doesn't mean you have to jump ship to a shittier Walmart version of them. If I ever post my content on Rumble, 
will kill me. That's the day I die. Instagram. This is where I'm gonna get some shit. I don't like using Instagram. Now, the reason I don't like using Instagram is because it's trying to be everything at once. And you know this. It has reels. It has a messenger. It has stories. It has posts. It's probably got gay porn on there somewhere. And I'm not trying to look at that yet. I think that Instagram does way too much quantity and all of it is kind of dog shit. They're constantly adding features and removing them. And again, there's no need for Instagram Messenger. I do not like using these third party social media messengers. And the stupidest part about it is that my school, they'll use Instagram, they'll use iMessage, and they'll use Snapchat at the same time. Why? Why wouldn't you just use- and I know that a lot of people watching this can relate. It's so dumb. Just use the one your phone has. I'm not gonna say this again. I don't like using Instagram. I don't like reels because I waste like an hour watching them and then I feel like shit afterwards I don't like using it, but I know it's a popular social media. We're actually getting to a good social media YouTube now we all know what I'm about to say about YouTube. It's my fucking dream. It's my job It's everything to me. It's all I care about But I want to explain at least why I think that it's the best social media a it's the best for the consumer It is hands down the best for the viewer. It's the best viewing experience It has the best catered algorithm and there is the widest variety Variety of content to watch on YouTube hands down no question not only that but it's pretty good for the creators there's a couple things I would tweak you know I don't really like that that one guy can show his inner asshole and not get demonetized but half the time I'm getting fucking restricted for putting copyright music that I already put in videos multiple times before and didn't get copyrighted for but this time this person thinks they is even though they used it as a sample and it's not even it, it's Nintendo me people will complain about YouTube all day long and it's all justified in my opinion I think removing the dislike was stupid. I think that it has pretty lackluster live streaming features. It's not really where I'd like to stream, but if I'm gonna, I'm gonna stream on YouTube. But overall, it's the biggest. If you're trying to grow a social media, you have to be using YouTube. If you're trying to use a social media, you should probably be using YouTube because it's the best one and you know that. So I'm gonna put it in amazing use every day because you're literally using it right now and you know damn well that's where it belongs. I think that this is Facebook Messenger. I don't know. I'm not gonna repeat myself. I'm not gonna waste my time. You know where I'm putting it. Discord. Now, here's where I'm gonna change what I said about messengers. The reason that Discord is actually useful is because you primarily use it on your computer where you don't have a built-in messaging app that does just the exact same things but better and less clunky. Discord also has the same problem like Instagram where you could accidentally stumble across a video of somebody getting beheaded or gay porn, which again, I'm not into. I'm not. But overall, I think that it's a pretty good messaging app. I like the features that it adds, and I think it's cool. I use it every day, even though I don't get a message maybe even once a week, but I do still like it. I think servers are cool. I think it's unique. I think it has a place as a messenger, and for that, I'm putting it in use every day. Now, musically, uh, what better social media to have used if you wanted to see underage people thinking they're attractive, lip syncing to attractive music? Yeah, I don't think anybody really liked musically, and I think that a lot of the people who became content creators after Musical.ly are pretty shitty people most of the time. I never used it. I, I kind of was too young. I, I wasn't really the, the target demographic, but then again, the people who were famous on it were also nine years old, so there's that. There's a reason it died. There's a reason that it no longer exists, and there's a reason that Musical.ly kids get a bad rap. I'm putting this in don't like, but I can understand if you're a fucking white girl who used it in 2016 and you're feeling sentimental. I'm not sorry. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, what the fuck is that butterfly doing on your screen? And, uh, it's Blue Sky. You might have never heard of that. I only heard about it a couple days ago. And, uh, imagine Twitter before Elon Musk bought it. That's what it is. And I know, that sounds very appealing. I also agree. But the problem, like Rumble, like Kick, is that their demographic is minuscule compared to the people that they're trying to beat. Nobody is going, you know what, instead of downloading Twitter, I'm gonna download Blue Sky. You would have to be off fucking meth. I understand the appeal of this one more than I do something like kick and rumble but at the same time nobody is using it there's no community on it and at the end of the day that's why you use a social media I understand why people might want to use this but I know that you don't so for that I'm gonna put it in okay oh boy tumblr all I know about tumblr is that one clip where the uh, CEO or somebody important realizes that 98% of their platform is porn and if you're going to tumblr or anywhere that's not a pornographic place to watch porn you're weird you're weird 
weird. And don't do that. Tumblr wasn't made to, to look at gay dudes. I need to get that off my brain. If the platform wasn't made for that type of content to be on it, and it ended up on there anyways, then I think that that's a problem. It means that the software originally must have been shitty. Then again, I never have used it. I never will use it. And, uh, I don't really like it. Alright, now we have Tinder. You might be asking yourself, hey, wait a minute, aren't you 14? You definitely don't use Tinder. And you're right, I don't. And I never will. Because the problem with dating apps is that if you're so much of an incel that you need an app to tell you who to talk to, I think that you have too many problems. Tinder is actually, you know, the popular, it's the good one. So there might be less of that on there. I don't know. I'm too scared to use it. And from the videos I've seen of people using it, the girls don't even look that hot. And I myself would never be posting thirst traps on Tinder. I definitely do understand the appeal of this one more than the other ones that I don't use. So for that, I'll put it in okay because I get why people use it. Now the thing I don't get why people use is off-brand Tinders. The only reason that you're using another dating app that's not Tinder is because you got banned from Tinder. And if you're so, so decrepit that you can get banned from Tinder, you need to log off. Get off. Go to that one therapy AA place that Jesse Pinkman goes to because you need to figure some shit out. There's no reason that you should be getting banned off of a dating app. And then for you to after that go, hey, I'm gonna keep trying, okay? This isn't a it's not over until I win situation, okay? Go out, find somebody to talk to, and talk to them in person. Stop advertising yourself like a salesman, okay? This one is Bumble, but I'm just using this as a blanket for all knockoff Tinder apps. Uh, never fucking use it, and you shouldn't either. Now, Spotify. Now, you might think this one's not a social media. I don't really care. Uh, Spotify is amazing. It's god-awful on mobile, though, and that's what I want to talk about mainly. Spotify on PC is amazing. It's completely fair. You listen to X amount of music, and then you get a small ad break. It makes sense. But then you go on mobile, and this is where I get a little bit pissed off. You go on Spotify to listen to music, right? And you're using Spotify, so that way you can specifically pick the song that you want to listen to. Okay, you're not putting in a CD on a record player, and then having to skip it to the- None of that. The point of something like Spotify is the convenience of it, to be able to pick your song. And on mobile, you can't even really do that, because half the time, it just plays a random song that you don't want to listen to. You also have, like, limited skips, the ads are, like, ten times more. It is awful. I don't know how anybody uses Spotify Mobile without premium. I would give this an amazing use every day, but because of how terrible it is on mobile, I literally play YouTube videos to listen to music on my phone. Spotify, you're a music streaming software. Be a music streaming software and stop playing some random ass song that I've already heard a thousand- Stop playing 2055, for the love of God, please. It's- I don't want to listen to it. It's good because it's great on PC, but it's so terrible on mobile. Now we have Twitter, and I will refuse to call it what it's actually called. Here's the thing. Twitter sucks, okay? I don't really like it that much. But the thing is, is that as terrible as it is, everything's going down on Twitter, and you know that. Everybody you follow has a Twitter account, and they're posting on it. All the news, breaking stuff. The way I learned that President Trump got shot in the ear was seven minutes after whenever I logged on to Twitter. Now that can either be a, a good thing or a bad thing, but the point is, is that everything's going on on Twitter. As shitty as it is, as shitty as Elon's turning it, everything is still going down on there. It's a great place to find people to work with. It's a great place if you're an editor, if you're a thumbnail designer like myself, to talk to other people like that. It's a great networking platform, and it does a lot of other good things, but at the end of the day, the fact that you have to pay for a blue check mark, and that if you don't have one, you can't talk to people who do, is so stupid. It's social media. Why are we making it pay to win? There's no need for that. I'm gonna put it in good, even though I use it every day, just because it has some really awful features that I do not understand. LinkedIn. What the fuck is LinkedIn? I've never used it. I think it's a place for, like, private contractors and business people to talk business. But again, for the 19th time, just use the goddamn app that's pre-installed on your phone. I've never used LinkedIn. I don't even know what its interface looks like, but I never fucking use it, and I hate it, and I hate you if you- you're a bad person if you use LinkedIn. Now, Reddit. Hear me out, okay? The only time that I'll ever use Reddit is if I need help to one specific problem. For that, it's great. For everything else, it is terrible. It is so bad. It's like the worst platform to use. The interface is garbage. The profile and account system feels like it just got ripped off from 2009 or hasn't been updated since the platform came out. I don't see the appeal of being a Redditor, of going on Reddit actively. It's so weird. It's such a weird place. I don't like it. There's no need to use something like Reddit daily unless you're fucking weird. Or, the third time, if you're looking for gay porn. 
I don't like it, but it can tell me how to fix the weirdest and the most obscure problems you could possibly imagine. So for that, I'll put it in don't like, even though I use it every now and again. Now, kick. Kick's terrible. Plain and simple. It's not good. I understand what they're trying to do by trying to make the platform so streamer friendly, so much more than even something like Twitch is, to appeal to the streamers so they switch there. But the problem, I think, is that there's no moderation. And while that seems like a great thing on paper, you know, having more creative freedom, having more freedom of speech. I'm a big fan of freedom of speech. When there's no moderation, people are going to use that for negative things. And that's all that kick is. All of the scum of the earth people go to kick. Nobody is going, I want to be a streamer, so I'm going to start streaming on kick. There may be a couple good streamers here and there on kick, but one of the main things that stuck in my brain about kick is that one clip of uh, Aiden Ross calling kick and asking him to bot him more viewers. That's another thing on kick. Insane botting problems. Every single streamer on kick is botting like crazy. And if you have to do that to make it look like your software is more successful, maybe just make a good software and then it will be successful. I don't like it. I don't know why streamers use it. If I was a streamer, I would never use it. Even for like a multi-streaming deal, it's just not where I want to be. It's not the type of content or people that I want to be associated with. WhatsApp, I'm not getting into this. Another softcore, how to get child porn without getting caught. Webs, I'm whatever. Facebook, we all know where this is going. They spy on you. We know this. It's terrible. They tried to rebrand a meta, which I thought was funny. It was like, hey, you guys don't like Facebook? Well, we'll just put a new logo on it. That's cool. And, and then people started liking it again. It was ridiculous. No, I don't like Facebook. I don't like Mark Zuckerberg. You don't like it either. I'm not going to waste your time. The only time I've ever seen Quora was on those, uh, it's actually me videos from Wired. I don't think anybody's actually using Quora. I think it's like a, a, a question website, but I don't even know what Quora does and I never use it. You probably never will either. So that's where it's going. What the fuck is that? What is this? I made this list a few days ago. I don't know what this is. It looks like the most stereotypical social media logo of all time. I don't know what this is. I'm going to put it there because it looks like a messenger to me, but I genuinely forgot what that was. We're ending it off with a bang. Vine was great. The Vine humor now is terrible. It's, it's the cringiest shit ever. But back then it was funny. Back then it was really innovative. There was nothing like Vine. There was no six second short form scrollable videos. And I mean, look at where it's gotten us now. Every single social media thinks they need short form content. Even softwares and social medias that already have too much shit going on for them. I'm looking at you, Instagram. Also, the content was actually good on there because people were trying. The six second limitation on videos, I feel like made it to where people had to be funny. They had to do something cool in six seconds. Otherwise, it just wasn't going to be good. And so I feel like the average quality of content on Vine is higher than any other short form content place ever. And it was the first one. There's something to be said about it dying. I've made fun of other social medias on here for dying eventually and Vine did die. But I think that it honestly could have stayed alive. I think that if it made a couple features, a couple changes, it really could have stayed alive. Because if you think about it, something like TikTok and Vine, they're not that far apart. Also, the Vine kids who grew up to be YouTubers are way cooler than the Musical.ly kids that grew up to be YouTubers. Everybody likes Vine. It's awesome. It'd go and use every day if it was still a thing. But that's the completed list. If you don't like it, I don't care. If you royally disagree with me, comment, give me engagement. I don't give a fuck. This is my opinion. And you're wrong if you think anything else. You're a bad person. You're a terrible person.